Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us to Seema Rama. Um, this is the panel discussion following the documentary In Utero. And my name is Kathleen Mann Gyllenhaal, and I'm the writer director of In Utero. Um, and we're also honored to have with us to my left here Kinga Orlikoska, the editor of In Utero, and also Dr. Rebecca Schlafer. Assistant Professor of Pediatrics at University of Minnesota and the Research Director of the Minnesota Prison Doula Project. Hi everyone. So first I think I'll just open it up to further introductions about the work you do. So we want to start, Rebecca? Sure. So um, as you mentioned, Kathleen, I am the research director for the Minnesota Prison Doula Project. Um, our Prison Doula Project started um, many, many years ago with uh, my community partner, Erica Garrity and Ray Baker, who were holding talking circles with incarcerated pregnant women at our state's women's prison. Um, we all are very well aware of the skyrocketing increases and in the number of women who are behind bars in our country. And it's estimated, at least in our state, that approximately one in 15 women come to prison pregnant. Um, Erica noticed that these women were really uh, lacking basic prenatal care and education. And she sat down with them and asked them what they wanted in terms of support for themselves and their pregnancies. Um, and what developed out of that was group-based education and one-on-one -on -one birth support. So our program provides prenatal education um, we provide continuous labor and delivery support when women are transferred to the hospital for delivery. We do what's called support during separation. So when pregnant women, after they've delivered at the hospital and they're going to go back to the prison and are separated from their infants, that's usually about 48 hours after delivery. Um, our doulas are there to provide support during that separation. And then they also provide two postpartum visits, one-on-one -on -one back at the prison um, when the woman has been returned to the prison. And that mom is then supported in our group-based program as well. So my job is the data nerd. I get to crunch all the numbers about our, our research and evaluation and then help document how effective our program is. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I want to jump in, but I want to give Kinga a chance to yeah. introduce herself. Um, Kinga? Yes, uh, my name is Kinga Oblikowska, and I am an um, editor of the film. And I just, um, just want to say that the, this, this, this documentary is just, was more than just an editing project for me. It was like a life-changing experience, an eye-opener. So I'm very, I'm very, I think I'm very lucky I work on this project. Oh. And like I said, I'm Kathleen Gyllenhaal, um, director of the film, and um, it was a life-changing um, project. I was actually trying to conceive when I started researching, um, and of course, like every m m woman who was thinking of motherhood, you know, you start to read a lot of things, and I just kind of went deeper and deeper um, into the scientific vein and the psychological vein of what was out there. Uh, which now I think is much more common. This was like four years ago. I think now we see a lot more articles regularly coming out in the mainstream press about epigenetics and about, you know, uh, the uh, how attachment with the mother during pregnancy and after affects human development. But at the time, I felt like I was kind of mining things. And then I did get pregnant, did have, um, you know, kept shooting during my pregnancy, started editing uh, at the la la latter part of the pregnancy, um, had my son Luke, and we were still editing? I can't remember. But anyway, I feel like I've been either um, in preconception, pregnancy, or birth, or after, you know, with this whole movie. So I remember the day we were, we were in the office editing, and you came and you brought the heartbeat sound of your yeah. baby. Didn't we want to use it in the film? Yes, at some point we want to use it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was very intertwined with my personal life. And I have to say this, this film had a much longer gestation than my son. <laughs> and it was in some ways harder. But um, So, okay, I have some... Uh, questions um, for everybody. Um, the first question is, what are, why, how come this topic has not been mainstream knowledge for so long? And it's kind of a general question. I think it has to do with how um, the idea that what is happening around a mother-to-be affects her, her um, emotional state, affects her cortisol levels, affects her 
her whole being and thus has an effect on the fetus that's growing and the unborn child inside of her. And this is the, the main kind of um, point that my movie is making um, because after that it kind of branches out into all kinds of um, consequences. So um, I was saying before that this seemed to be less uh, known about four years ago and more known now. And so does anyone have anything to say about why I think it took, is, is, is just coming, coming out in a way? I think it's a, I mean, it's a great question. I think part of it is that the science behind this needed to catch up, right? The science is complicated and to translate the science to the lay public everyday moms who need to understand this, and moms and dads, um, is is hard. And the science about epigenetics is complicated. I also think, you know, the cynical side of me says that um, it's about valuing of motherhood and the val valuing women's roles and the complexity of women's roles and the complexity of motherhood. And um, I think for eons, uh, Mothers in, in other countries understood how important it was to nurture um, a pregnant woman. But in the United States, that hasn't always been the same value. And so um, I think it's sort of a two pronged. The scientist in me says it's, it took time for the science to catch up. And the cynical person in me says it's really about how we value women and mothers in this country. I, I totally agree. I agree with you. I mean, I feel that um, it's. There's so many other values that are placed on women, like to, um, you know, have this big successful career or to, you know, just all these different roles we're supposed to play. And so when we become mothers in this culture, I think it's very confusing about what your uh, priority is. And I think that this information that's coming from the science is almost bringing us back to what should be almost an intuitive um, uh, sense of, of what we should do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think it's an upstream, uh, upstream sort of battle in some ways to get back to that. Yeah. What about you? Well, I think that this is more than also, you know, yeah, we have today's world, we have women play a lot of roles, but other countries can handle that and they can recognize and there has maternity leaves, paternity leaves. Right. It's right. all really well organized. So it's not like... You know, yeah, there were times are changing, but I don't think the country, as the United States, is really embracing those changes well. And I just don't think it's recognizing the need to help mothers. Mm -hmm. And that's why this film, to me, was so important because it's saying everything that we're doing for the moment, even before we conceive, yep. you know, um, envisioning that life that we're going to invite in, right, is you're already starting to make space for that. And so um, from that moment onwards, everything we do is actually going to affect the society and the species. So it's actually the most important job one could have, you know, and that, and that also requires that the people around that woman, that mother-to-be, are part of that effort as well. Um, too often, I think it's about oh, it's all it's all on the mother's shoulders, when in fact it's the the village around her. It's equally their responsibility to make sure that she does have a chance to be more relaxed and less you know stressed. Um, uh, and that support is is I think missing for so many. So okay, what was um, the second question? What has been the most remarkable finding? Um, for you, Kinga, in making this film? Oh. Hmm. You know, there was, there was many of them, but uh, I feel the most remarkable, for me, remarkable finding was that uh, so many things depend on, 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 on prenatal life. Before I, I actually met Kathleen, I was very interested in my personal uh, journey and my trauma and um, I actually was was thinking about what happens in the womb. It was kind of very interesting that happened like really uh, at, at weeks before I met Kathleen. I had those. I really wanted to explore that. <laughs> so so then I when I went to this into this movie, I really I, I started discovering that so many things depend on that time. So I think mean, it was for me it was the most remarkable. Yeah, it's sort of like we're pushing the envelope back and for a lot, it's taken a long time for people, for, for you know, um, all of us to understand that early childhood matters and birth circumstances matter and we keep moving it back. And I think that was, you know, another main aim of the film was just to 
open up people's minds. I think some people walk in thinking your life begins at birth and then they walk out thinking, oh, it, it actually, I'm shaped even before that. And, and even, and I'll talk to people afterwards and they kind of just go like, oh yeah, that makes sense. In my you know? But before they walked in, I think they would never have seen that. So I think we managed to lay out the argument pretty, pretty well because all the science is there. Well, and I think that's kudos to, to you both for really being able to take something that is so profoundly complicated and has taken decades of, of complicated scientific research to convey to an audience that doesn't have that scientific understanding the complexities of this. And, and to be able to have people walk away and understand, yeah, it, who we are and what we become and our health is begins long before the, the cells start coming together, right? Long before we are beings. And I think that is a complicated message that you've done such a beautiful job displaying. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think that there is, um, in your work then, do you see that, how do you see the support that your group is giving to these women that's in a very, you know, extreme circumstance? How do you see it um, benefiting and having a better result? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I mean, the corrections world is a, a complicated and um, bureaucratic place. And I think it's been somewhat challenging. You know, we have to remember that the prison system was built for men and by men. You know, really, this idea of having women in prison is... Um, you know, really an issue that the correction system has had to address in the last 30 years. And then having pregnant women in prison is just a, a complicated health issue that the prison systems weren't built to address. And so for us in the beginning, I remember we got a lot of corrections administrators who would say, you want to do what? You want to hold these women's hands and support them during their pregnancy? And the idea of providing emotional support or rubbing their back or helping them through their pregnancy seemed... Um, too touchy-feely, right? Um, and not consistent with the safety and security goals of a prison system. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember that before our program started in Minnesota and in most prisons across the country, um, pregnant women who are incarcerated are laboring and delivering alone, um, save for two correctional officers that are in the room um, and the nursing staff and the hospital staff that will come and go. And so the circumstances of labor and delivery, let alone the nine months of pregnancy that had preceded that and the preconception circumstances, um, women are living, giving birth in, in the most dire of consequences in our country every day. And, you know, add on to that, that women may be labor, you know, laboring with physical restraints on their legs is, it's really an unbelievably inhumane picture. And so for us, it wasn't just about like helping women be prepared for their labor, be prepared for their pregnancies, think about what mothering meant for them. It was really about trying to create an environment as best as we possibly could that would support that woman um, and, and take away the shackles and create an environment where they were respected and had autonomy and were empowered to have decisions about their birth that they would otherwise not have in this corrections environment. Wow, I mean, I get just chills um, listening to you. I mean, when I was in labor, I mean, if I wasn't able to move, I mean, the pain would have been that much worse. I mean, right. that reduces pain, um, and that, of course, in that uh, that state of being is 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 what the child is feeling too. Precisely, so to come into this world with that feeling of of restriction, of fear, and all that. So. And so our clients will say to us that simply knowing that their doula was going to be there for them provided them with so much um, sort of understanding and patience and safety. They felt safe knowing that when they were transferred from the prison, when they got to the hospital, their doula was going to meet them there and that they wouldn't have to do this alone. Um, and I think that that is one of the biggest accomplishments of our program is making sure that no woman will ever labor and deliver alone. That's just fabulous. That's really, you know, we did, um, we got some feedback on Facebook once when we were launching this initiative, you know, the, to sign this bill to stop the shackling. And the responses were, some were pretty vitriolic. I mean, some were like, they deserve this, you know, they just deserve this. You shouldn't have wound up in prison in the first place. And uh, what do you say to that? 
I think, you know, we get that all the time, unfortunately, this sort of, she should have thought about that before she got pregnant. And, um, you know, you, I'm of the mindset, you do the crime, you pay the time, and maybe she should have thought about her kids. And, you know, my two reactions to that are, are one is, I think that that is a really easy response for typically um, a white person who has financial means to be able to say, oh, I, I have the luxury, I have the privilege of being able to make choices or have access to resources that would lead me down different paths to make choices. Simply having um, legal representation through the criminal justice process, right? Opens up different choices often for white women and, and women who have financial means. Um, and so when we think about choices, it looks very different for different communities in our country. And that's really an important piece. And even if you don't get that argument, I think then the second piece I say is, regardless, this child is completely innocent. And, you know, we were talking briefly, right, as I had joined beforehand, if you believe in the value of life, um, then you have to support that woman moving forward because this child, um, is a completely innocent being um, and requires, you know, we are employed to support that from its earliest days to have the healthiest pregnancy and the healthiest children. Um, and it doesn't do us as a society any good to throw that baby away, essentially. Right. Like, nobody's winning there. And as a taxpayer and as a citizen and as a mother, who's winning if we say, if we take the mindset of you did the crime, you should do the time? Because that child did not. Yes, yes. And that brings us actually to the next big question, um, which actually hasn't been a big question in terms of a lot of the Q&As I've done. It doesn't come up, but but you, I think we should go there now. And it's, does the film, sort of the findings in the film, how does it contribute to pro-life, pro-choice debate? Um, it's an obvious uh, question when you look at the film saying that life begins before birth. I mean, we all kind of know that, you know, obviously there is a something growing in there, but we're also saying that it's being shaped by the experiences then. Um, the film does not say uh, really anything about um, the, the consciousness and the, you know, and when doesn't, I'm not trying to, to make a point about when that, that child, that fetus becomes a person, you know, individual. But I think what the film does explicitly say is that it's a feeling organism um, in the womb. And that can, you know, immediately kind of opens up this, this debate then, like, is this, what is this message? And I, and I mean, I have a lot to say about it, but I'll, I'll let Kinga um, go first. Yeah, you know, I think uh, recently, and it's always there's always been a lot of politics around the issue and recently it's been even more i think i think we should if we want to really solve like really help not because you know it's never going to solve the problem but if you want to improve situation of mothers and and children you should move away from politics and go to compassion because that's what boils down to it all boils down to compassion look at the look at the woman look at the child and try to find the best way for both of them, mm -hmm. and um, we definitely, you know, there's like all the subject of abortion is kind of like you can you can forever discuss that is you, there is no solution here because this is like there is a, a one human, and inside of one human is not a human. So you want to help one, you hurt another. You you always there's always gonna be a compromise. So I mean, let's move away from that discussion and let's maybe. I, my, in my opinion, let's let's think about how we support women. So, for example, they don't. Many women are forced to abortion because of economical reasons. They would like to keep the baby. Why can we just focus on that issue and try to like help help those families first? Yeah, and 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 you're right, King. I mean, I, I think we have a section in the film that that tries to uh, address this issue, and I think you know all of our interview subjects kind of agreed that this is, their findings kind of transcend this debate in a way. It's not about, you know, pro-choice or pro-life. It's really about um, both, in, in some way, both sides are right, you know? Um, uh, this is a life and a woman should have a choice. And, but as a society though, we're at this place where abortion is a necessary 
thing, unfortunately, because we are not in a utopia where all women are supported and have the choice and um, uh, and the means to raise a child in a, in a wonderful, supportive, loving environment to you know keep evolving the species in a good way. So um, and. But maybe the goal should be that maybe one day we get to that place. But here we are now. Yeah, I think about, you know, the underlying, the underpinnings of a reproductive justice framework and thinking about um, one core component of that is that a woman has um, the choice and, the, and is empowered to, have, to become pregnant under the conditions under which she would like to become pregnant, right? Um, and conceive if and when she wants to. And I think the pro-life, pro-choice question is about the baby and where it comes. And we've missed the beginning discussion about the conditions under which a woman would like to choose to become pregnant or not become pregnant. Right. And I think that the challenge in our country is that we have created such disparities in those conditions under which women are are choosing or not to become pregnant or not, simply not having access to comprehensive birth control um, for all women given the circumstances so that they have the right to choose whether or not they get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a conversation that's not happening. It always happens post-conception. And I, I wish that we were having a more thoughtful conversation in this country about the conditions under which all People want to have healthy, satisfying romantic relationships that, <laughs> that include a, a healthy sexual component and that we get an active choice in whether or not we become pregnant and conceive a child. Yes. I mean, I, and, and I feel like the, the film, by, by bringing a spotlight to, you know, how all of this affects that, that human being, from conception onwards is is supporting this 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 push towards let's go back let's go back let's let's look at the beginning let's make sure those conditions are right let's let's you know before during and after because you can see how it has a big effect later on you can see how all the these problems in health and problems in crime and problems in society you know they they come from this early early time so if we can i think that was why we were so passionate about it like we're sitting on this information we can deliver in a kind of a more mainstream vehicle um, in a film um so that the information is now out there and it'll take a lot a while for people to digest it and understand it implement it and there'll be resistance and all that but we have to keep pushing that information out there because is that's what's going to get us beyond the politics. I also want to also want to add that we when we were making this movie, we were completely aware that we only have like an hour and a half to to, to just only touch on the subject. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to cover, I mean, we would like to cover all the problems of mothers or the 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 the, the, the effect in society later. You will need to have an entire TV series on that. Because this is a huge subject, obviously. Mm -hmm. right. I can only touch on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. And I guess this sort of brings us to in utero too, sort of. I mean, Kinga sort of brought us there. Um, yeah, we felt that, you know, some of the feedback we got was, okay, I get it. Now, now what do we do? <laughs> right? And go from awareness to action. Right, right. Or even like someone who's pregnant watching, okay, what do I do? You know, or someone who's had a kid and went through a stressful pregnancy, okay, what do I do? Or, or an adult who has these, um, you know, anxiety problems, what do I do? It's, it's happened so long ago. So we've been, since the release in the film last year, we've been um, facing all of these questions and, and this responsibility in a way that we've sort of, you know, um, uh, a friend of mine just said, you just cut me open, you know, and like, I'm bleeding out here. What do I do? So actually, Stephen, who couldn't join us, my husband and the producer of the film and Kinga, um, uh, the team is back together again. Um, and we've actually never stopped in a way uh, of trying to find the treatments that are out there that address early trauma. So it's become in utero two for lack of a better title right now, because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> in utero two point oh, I'm a cleaner, better womb. I don't know. Um, is is really what what is out there to help both people through all stages of their life. So a woman who's pregnant. What are the sort of 
um, group therapies or something out there. We found them. We found a place in uh, Copenhagen where they come together and they, they're, you know, bonding with the babies growing inside. Um, same thing going on in Seattle with, with prenatal bonding. But then it's also like adults. Is there a therapy or some kind of, I don't like the word therapy so much because it makes it sound like something wrong with you or you're sick. It's really just how do we understand what happened to us early on before we could remember, before mm -hmm. we had conscious, you know, minds. Um, and there is stuff. So we're, we're really digging into this very interesting territory that deals with early trauma, or in, in other words, early conditions of life that shaped you and how you can, as an adult, understand that. Super exciting. <laughs> it's definitely down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Um, it's not just those prenatal experiences, but the prenatal experiences that cause some kind of like our behavioral patterns and that we're not aware of that happen there, but we kind of keep, keep on repeating it. Mm -hmm. So that's why those type of uh, workshops and those, those, those type of like therapy, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, mm -hmm. uh, works. Uh, try, try to discover the, the unconscious, the unconscious uh, blocks that we have. So Rebecca, I want to turn it back to you because you're actually out there and if you're, we're just filmmakers and you're the one who's out there. That's a really important job. <laughs> really, really on the front lines. And um, I wanted to ask, you know, what's the impact that you're seeing? Do you, do you see this being replicated in other states, what you're doing? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we have been really lucky. Um, our program has gotten a lot of great attention. Um, the BBC did a clip um, several weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago now, um, had come out and filmed um, some of the work that we do, we're do. we doing. Um, we've gotten a number of states, other states who have reached out to us and Canada who have said, what are you doing in Minnesota and how did you do it? Um, which has been really more than we could have ever expected. You know, I think for Erica, Ray and I, um, we spend so much of our time on the front lines that it's easier, it's easy to lose track of the bigger picture and sort of how our work is impacting um, people across the country. Um, we've been providing a lot of support to the Tutwiler Women's Prison in Alabama and have gone down several times and they are beginning to provide prenatal education and birth support to um, women in prison in Alabama, which is really exciting. Um, and then there are a number of other birth support programs across the country um, that take a slightly different form in some respects, but we are really trying to develop a network um, of people who we can support each other, uh, doulas who are on the front lines, midwives who are working um, with really high risk and vulnerable women um, so that we can share support with each other. Um, and that's been really exciting. And I think the legislative stuff um, has been, again, something that we didn't expect. I'm not a policymaker. I am not somebody who had any experience writing legislation. But when I was asked to do that in Minnesota, and then have been since asked to review some of the the other states' laws and the federal government stuff that's coming through, that's a good reminder for me that, like, if not us, then who? Um, and that we really have um, an obligation to take what we've learned and share it with others so that more women can be um, helped through this process and that their their birth experience can be the, the best it can be despite the considerable um, risks that they often experience. Right. So, um that's, I mean, again, it's just amazing the work that you're doing. I'm getting a little prompt that we, we're running a little bit out of time. Um, we've got about five minutes left. So if there's um, anything else you want to add, now's well, the time. Well, I want to add uh, just, just really quickly that what really the biggest impact this will make on me is inspired me to think, look at and, and, and water around me. And we talk about, you know, community. We need community. And it's just... We, we just we just we just need to to enhance that uh, the thinking and and I actually started building my own communities and and just working towards this direction and and my my idea my ideal uh, dream would be to go back to old times when we lived in like like villages with mm -hmm. like uh, with a bunch of families. And we're supporting each other, which is like what utopian right now sounding, mm -hmm. but it's very hard to make, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's hard work. And I also want to take take, take people uh, take, take you, thank you, Rebecca, and other people who are doing this amazing work. And and right now, I mean, 
if you watch this movie and you understand it, you see how important it is what you do. Mm-hmm. And it's, 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 yeah, I want to thank you so much for that too, for your hard work too. Well, thanks to both of you. I mean, I do, we use, I have used this film in my class to teach undergrads on, on child development. And I think it becomes critically important for people to understand. My husband and I actually watched the film together. Um, and he, you know, is an engineer and a scientist and a dad of four kids. And he's like, wow, this is amazing. You know, oh, that's great. Yeah. I think that becomes critically important when you said we're just filmmakers. The fact that there are folks like you that can take the complicated science and disseminate it so that everybody can benefit from the knowledge, I think, is is hugely valuable. So I just say thanks to that. Well, Kinga and I sat there for a year and a half editing because it was so dense and confusing and complicated. So it means a lot that you say it's, it was clear. Um, and I wanted to share one thing that Stephen shared with me when he was... Um, Uh, speaking with um, someone in California working with the the prisons and another doula, Um, and this will be the final thing I say, um, is, uh, you know, it is an intense film. And um, sometimes we we worry that, you know, are we creating some more anxiety or stress by bringing up, you know, these, this information. And this woman said to Stephen, "Um, actually, the women in our prisons are so, you know, that their reaction after seeing in utero is I can make a difference in my child's life. So instead of, you know, it's complete opposite of what we, we thought they might feel. It was like, this is an opportunity for me to actually create a positive difference in, yeah. in my child's life. So that was just want to share that, you know, because it does sometimes feel like this is so much to take in, but then there's this amazing part of it too, where, wow, we can actually improve the world, you know, so with what we do now. So um, I'm just closing remarks. Um, if you missed the film, you can see it uh, until Sunday at simarama.club, where you can also take the action of the month, which is signing an important pet- petition to protect and, and support incarcerated women who are pregnant. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And um, uh, Rebecca, I just we, yeah. we're going to talk more. We're going to talk more. Absolutely. That sounds great. <laughs> Take care. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye.